A very good evening. I'm Aditi Lamba with the Tuesday night edition of South Asian News with Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. Another active week in the diaspora with much coming in on culture and politics as we once again prepare for next week's U.S. midterm elections to be held on November 6th. While we take this time to remind all our viewers about the importance of casting your vote next week, we'd also like to reach out to all South Asian organizations and individuals for any opinions or appeals as we near the elections. Do reach to us if you have something to say about South Asians and U.S. politics. Also at this point, we send out our condolences for all grieving families and friends that gathered today for the first funerals to mourn the victims of Saturday's massacre at Pittsburgh Synagogue Tree of Life, which killed 11 people, ranging in the age of 54 to 97, the deadliest assault on Jews in American history. Very sad act of hatred on American soil. Again, we send our condolences to all. With that, let's begin tonight's episode, taking a look at the headlines. South Asian Council for Social Services hosts 18th Annual Gala Food for Health in New York. Get to know Vicky Palladino, first-time Republican candidate running for New York State Senate District 11 at ITV Gold Studio. Indian Medical Program organizes Annual Health Camp 2018 at the Holy Name Medical Center in New Jersey. More on, More on the other side of the break. Stay with us in Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. We'll be right back. Welcome again, I'm Aditi Lamba and you're watching Vision of Asia South Asian news segment. Let's begin the episode taking a look at New York, which recently saw the South Asian Council for Social Services host its 18th annual gala, Food for Health. The event saw supporters come together at the annual gathering for a day of festivities and celebrations, supporting the council's mission to empower and integrate underserved South Asians and other immigrants into the economic and civic life of New York. This year's theme, Food for Health, focused on significance of healthy food in maintenance of physical, mental, and emotional well-being. With many dignitaries and officials in attendance, the event was successful in presenting forth many attributes of the organization, which aims to assist in the areas of healthcare access, hunger relief, civic engagement, and much more. Let's take a look. Today we are here to celebrate the 18th anniversary of South Asian Council and there are a lot of number of supporters here and the theme for this year's celebration is food for health. We have been seeing hunger in the community for quite some time and we started, we started two years ago the very first South Asian food pantry. Not only do we give, uh, you know, what, what uh, South Asians eat, like rice, dal, atta, and uh, spices. They get turmeric and cumin and chili powder and so on, and cooking oil, canola oil as well. But we have other services like healthcare access, and uh, we connect people to health insurance. And we also take care of uh, seniors, senior support services, and we teach English. All right, basic and uh, basic and advanced and c computer classes they're all free and we speak 11 South Asian languages and Spanish and Creole uh, so we are able to speak to the clients in their own languages and of course we understand their culture when I immigrated to New York and the United States in 1969 there were not many Indians or South Asians here those who were here were well, either students or those who arrived here on what was known as a uh, third preference visa, engineers and doctors, uh, doctors and uh, nurses and academics who had well-paying jobs. So when someone asked me from home, are you doing any community work? I said, there's nothing to do here. Mm -hmm. These are all well-paid people. It's ironic that I use the term for welfare. Food is such a basic necessity, which we will discuss it. We which we will show you which we will discuss it. Over the past 18 years, I have seen clients come to us with varied and multiple, multiple needs. But underneath it all, there was one common thread. The needs of an immigrant 
who did not speak English, had no skills, and no prospects of getting out of the situation he or she was in. We've trained ourselves to listen to them and address the broad spectrum of their needs. And SAS has been one of the uh, good uh, NGOs uh, or non-profit groups in our community under the leadership of Suha and, and the many talented staff uh, doing wonderful jobs, helping our school children, helping our uh, middle-aged men, our women, and seniors, you know. And they do a lot of good programs. And I saw them grow a lot, tremendously, for the last uh, eight years or so. That's why uh, I keep uh, funding them. And uh, for the foreseeable future, as long as I'm in your office, I do my best to give them uh, uh, funding and uh, from different initiatives. When we do the images there, what do we find? We find that about 23% of them also have classification. Again, we thought, you know what? It is a positive side. We can eat anything, right? <laughs> so, so now, when you start looking at them, so we, when we did some of the autopsies in some of those mummies, what do we find is lowest calcium, coronary calcium ever reported in the world. So, if they can do it, why can't they not? Can we really not be? And it's all about sharing here. Can we really share? It is not a luxury. Can we just commute, consume what is only needed here? Given my South Asian background, I'm honored to touch upon a topic near and dear to my heart, food for health. I grew up in Texas, and we all know that everything in Texas is bigger. I remember the all-you-can-eat buffets and the unlimited soda refills. I also remember being encouraged by my mom to finish my plate of food, even after two courses of rice, sambar, dal, rasam, and vegetables. There was still a third course. So how exactly are we supposed to process the relationship between food and health? In order to form a relationship between food and health, we must understand that food has medicinal powers to help provide our bodies to perform in an optimal manner. For example, eating vegetables such as spinach, kale, and broccoli provide a source of dietary iron and help energize. Water-rich fruits and vegetables help us stay hydrated and feel satiated. Consuming whole grains provides fiber and helps us feel longer. Many of these items are available at the pantry. For example, if you suffer from IBS, perhaps raw cruciferous vegetables should be avoided and instead try to consume cooked vegetables paired with a grain or a protein. These are just some examples to address. Uh, I, I, I would say that these people are not visible. You, I think we should make certain that these people be, become visible to us and help them. I know we help people back in India, back in Pakistan, Bangladesh and all those things. But people here, our own uh, people need help and just uh, be aware of that. Be compassionate and uh, support them. Let's now take a look at another gathering which brought together healthcare professionals and doctors at the Indian Medical Program's Annual Health Camp 2018 in New Jersey. Held at the Holy Name Medical Center, the Annual Health Camp provided an avenue for the large South Asian population in New Jersey to access healthcare details, screenings and consultations from South Asian professionals. The Indian Medical Program at Holy Name has physicians, nurses, and staffs and volunteers who thoroughly understand the culture and traditions, patients who have access to a large network of Indian American physicians, Asian Indian cuisine, Indian newspaper, and much more. Let's take a look at some highlights. Sorry. I'm the program manager for the Indian Medical Program here at Holy Name Medical Center and uh, I welcome all of you here to our health camp. So 
today uh, here we are registering uh, Indian community members uh, from health camp. Uh, we are expecting about 150 people uh, today. So a lot of people have come already, but we are expecting uh, some more. So right after the health camp, uh, we are also preparing the Bali celebration. Uh, so uh, entire Indian community members uh, will be uh, able to enjoy the food, entertainment, uh, as well as uh, getting to know each other. So this is a very important event uh, for Holy Indian Medical Centers, Indian Medical Program. Uh, we are delighted to have so many community members and our partners and our volunteers uh, to participate with us. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Dr. Gitika Singh and as you can see we are here at Holy Name Medical Center today. We have a lot of patients here as you can see getting their BMI tests done. In our Indian community a lot of us do not know what BMI is for. BMI is a very important index that you need to get checked especially for obesity, height, weight, as well as for your well-being. Having an accurate BMI test is very important, not only for you, but for everyone. You know, come here, have your BMI checkup done with us at Holy Name Medical Center. We have a free healthcare camp going on today, and it's an annual event, which is going to be every year. Besides your BMI, you can get your blood pressure. There are other UTI tests as well. And we want to see you here. And people are getting their free checkups, EKGs are free, blood pressure, during any kind of tests, they are giving free services for that and later on follow up also. And on top of it, they are having a good Indian food for all the people who are coming here to enjoy the Indian yummy food. It's very good that the people, senior people who have insurance, as well those who don't have the insurance, they are entitled for the, uh, taking the advantage of the medical camp. It's good that they are arranging for the medical uh, checkup. We are looking for forward to them in the future also. This is the second time we are coming for the Diwali celebration. Here the advantage is on the same premises. We can invite all lot of uh, senior people. They are taking advantage of the medical camp as well as the Diwali celebration. Uh, we are here following the success of the Korean medical program to now take uh, the same idea of promoting health and awareness and education uh, to the Indian community at large. What we're trying to do here is build awareness amongst our own program uh, of Indian physicians with the Indian community, uh, bringing outreach in terms of testing, particularly to those uh, who may not otherwise have the uh, opportunity or ability to seek medical care. Uh, we're hoping today to build upon our success and ensure the health of our community. Um, the good part, the benefit is that the Indian doctors are familiar with the common problems in the Indian population. Um, we can talk about it, we can, um, you know, they're, they're checking the blood pressure, screening them for high cholesterol, um, checking their body mass index. Um, so I think it's a good um, place where we can talk to them about preventable diseases like hypertension, diabetes, uh, obesity, high cholesterol, heart disease. Um, we also have a cardiologist here, there are facilities for EKGs that can be done and all of them, all of this is being done free of cost. They had lab work this morning, the physicians are here now reviewing their blood work with them. Um, so I think it's a great platform for people to come in, um, talk about their medical problems um, and get solutions. And the physicians can refer them out from here if they feel that there is a, a medical problem that they have which is easily preventable or they need treatment, um, they can refer them out further to the specialist. Um, the Holy Name Hospital has a great um, Indian outreach program and there are volunteers here who can help them and guide them further about their follow-up as well. I'm here at the Holy Name Medical Center Asian Health Camp. Uh, we're doing EKGs for patients. There are a lot of patients waiting to get their heart check and blood pressure check. Um, it's a free camp for all uh, patients that uh, would come to the camp today. Uh, we will try to get them to the right uh, referral, to the nutritionist, to the right specialist. Um, patients uh, are welcome to come to the Holy Name Medical Center Asian Health Program. Thank you. So I definitely think uh, one person without whom all of this 
wouldn't be possible uh, media-wise uh, to let other people know that couldn't make it today. Dr. Sudeep Marik, thank you so much for helping us and providing us this coverage via ITV Gold. Thank you and we hope next year you can make it to our Diwali in Malaysia. Thank you. Time for another show break. Stay with us on Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. We'll be right back. And welcome back, you are tuned into Vision of Asia, bringing you prime South Asian highlights from all across. Concluding the show tonight, we have now an exclusive chat featuring Republican candidate for New York State Senate District 11, Vicky Palladino. The first time candidate is a longtime New York resident and has dedicated her entire life serving the community of New York in Queens and reaching out to its diverse population. With issues focused on education, prisons, and much more, Vicky Palladino hopes to use her platform and her New York experience in handling many issues that have concerned the district. ITV Gold senior anchor Imran brings us the exclusive story. Let's get an idea, you know, let's get a clear vision about you. Now, what brought you into this race and what are some of the changes that you want to implement against what the ideas of Senator Tony Avella? Well, first of all, I got into this uh, last year in the late summer right. when I went after uh, Mayor de Blasio Correct. Uh, for his going to the G20 summit right. to protest against our country and stand with the anarchists and Antifa and the Communist Party as they burned down Hamburg, Germany. Correct. I also went after him for, uh, in that very same, I waited. I had manners, I waited till his interview was done and then I asked him to take a question. So it's not like I attacked him in any way, shape or form. I was reasonable in the beginning and then I just let him have it for his not being a mayor that's worth respecting. The police officers don't respect him. He left an assassinated funeral, assassinated police officer's funeral right. in order to protest against our country in Germany and I called him out on it. So it started from there. And I got a great many calls from police officers, wives, mothers, widows, and so on. And my husband and I and my two sons answered every one of them. But that evening also, newspapers called and Channel 2 News called and um, Nicole Maliotakis called Correct. and Bo Dietl called. So I got, to, I got a chance to understand politics uh, at a very high level uh, just last year. A, mace, a race for mayor of New York City. You know, it's the Correct. big time. Right. So I got to see how it all worked, and I was getting angrier and more angry at the condition of our city, the corruptness in our city. And I got to get, I, I voice my opinion and be part of a movement to try to replace de Blasio. And that through that enthusiasm, I was approached at the end of November and asked if I wanted to seek the seat of State Senate District 11 in Queens, my district where I was born and raised, and I gave it some thought. I married 44 years, talked it over with my husband, my two sons who are grown men, and they said, it's something you've always wanted to do, go for it. Your property taxes go up whenever the mayor feels like somebody else needs something, some special interest needs to be paid attention to. It's, he's making his money off of the backs of us, as is Cuomo, right. okay? Everything starts in Albany. Starts in Albany, it trickles down to the city. We only have three Republican city councilmen. And then from the city, it goes to local elections. What everybody has to understand is this is a local election. Local politics, please do not, anybody, take local, this local election for granted. Correct. This okay. can change the face of our district for generations. This election is so important because it will affect not only us, but our children and our grandchildren. We only hold the Senate by one Senate seat. And we're practically tied because of Zimka Felda, who is an IDC, he's the only guy who stayed IDC. Correct. Okay, so the whole face of our state can change if we become a one-party state. Now, for people who are from other countries, who understand communism and socialism, they know what it's like to be dominated by a one-party system. 
That's what New York State is facing, a one-party system. Standardize an SHSAT. Why does the mayor want to do away with it if it ensures quality education for the future? Well, this mayor doesn't believe in any sort of uh, hard work being rewarded. Correct. Uh, no he, doubt. No. No, hard work is not rewarded. Everybody, he wants to put them on some sort of level playing field. It's the same reason why he really doesn't like us in suburbia. He wants everything to be uh, like up in the Bronx or, you know, you can't, everything is not, uh, can't be rubber stamped through or be a footprint. Every, every community is different. Right. Every needs are different. But to get back to the SHSAT exams, this is, probably the fairest way. This is a merit-based test. Right. There are programs in place through every school in all these boroughs where children can be tutored after school for free. There are programs set up where children can go so that they can do better on the test. Now, if they don't take advantage of what's available to them, and they choose to do extracurricular activities that don't include studying, why are we going to demoralize or criminalize, for lack of a better word, those who did choose to study and work hard? This is not a race-based test. This is a merit-based test. Yeah. You make the grade, you make the school. Homelessness has increased an insurmountable amount of people. We went from 60,000 to 67,000 people. And it's all over New York City. I mean, a city with 8 million people, 67,000 people is way too much. So being a senator, if you're elected as the senator for District 11, what can we do to combat it? Because I feel that this is an issue that has occurred even before the days of Mayor Bill de Blasio. Oh, homelessness has been around a long time. Now, if you live in the Bellrose and Glen Oaks area, area. You are having people defecating on the street, throwing rocks through windows. Crime has grown. The face of that, those two towns, three towns, has changed. Floral Park has changed. They've taken motels and hotels. De Blasio's budget is $2.1 billion for homeless. There's no cures in sight. There's no remedies. There's no setups for the drug addiction. There's no setup for the mentally ill. There's no cures. He just keeps pouring money down into a rabbit hole going nowhere. I want to know where that $2.1 billion is going. I want transparency. I will demand transparency. We have got a budget that New York State is out of control. Who's getting paid off? The breakup of Rikers Island, waterfront property, putting three prisons, two prisons on every borough but Staten Island? And answer me this, how did the population of Rikers Island, when Bernie Kerrick was warden, go from 22,000 down to 9,000? How did that happen? Did crime stop? No. What did he do? He shackled our police officers. Okay, our cops can't do their job. That's what's going on in New York City. We need, we need to know what's going on. We need to understand what's going on. That's my job. My job is to find out. And that's, that's part of the reason people are gonna have a little issue with Vicky Palladino because Vicky Palladino won't stop when they say stop. Vicky Palladino will continue on until Vicky gets the answers. And this wraps up our segment of South Asian happenings for tonight. U.S. midterm elections are on November 6th, so do send us your suggestions to get your voices and organizations on our show, raising more awareness. Do write to us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on our Facebook handle at itvgold. Remember to now also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch many of our shows for free. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Vision of Asia, and I am Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well.